this AI stuff is everywhere. So many people are talking about it. So I thought I had to try and figure out if ChatGPT can actually write a research paper. Let's find out and stay tuned till the end so you can see what prompts I use in order to generate this response from ChatGPT. Everyone is using AI for something to quickly find information, to brainstorm ideas, to think, to even summarize or expand simple prompts into full-fledged documents. People are using AI for all number of things. So it led me to think, is AI in particular ChatGPT capable enough if I was to give it the right prompt to generate a response so well versed that it could actually pass as a research paper. So you know me being the research guy, I had to test it out and then share the response here in this YouTube video. A little disclaimer, I've used now ChatGPT4 to generate this response and there is a difference between the conventional ChatGPT 3.0 and this kind of 3.54 model. You can see on the screen now, when you were to kind of buy ChatGPT4 because it is a paid service, you can see the difference on the screen where you get better responses, faster kind of response times, and you're kind of more privy to new features that come out. So I just wanted to share that before I go into sharing the actual response because you might think, oh, I didn't get the response. And it might be because you're using the free version. So without further ado, let's get into the whole crux of this video. So before I go into the response that I actually generated, I started to understand that that prompt in particular, what you give ChatGPT, the input, is actually very, very important. I saw this on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, all the social media platforms that what you give ChatGPT is very important in regards to what you get back. So I did a lot of homework, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of kind of carousel posts on what are the most effective prompts and the way you should go about typing your query into ChatGPT in order to get a good response and something like asking ChatGPT to write an entire paper requires a good succinct prompt that can be very targeted in order for ChatGPT to find out what I'm after and write everything out. So all the tutorials, the guides, the posts that I found in regards to ChatGPT prompts or in the video description down below if you want to check them out in order for you to have a go at your attempt at trying to get ChatGPT to write a paper that's in your field. So hopefully you find them useful but without further ado let's get into actually the response that I got from ChatGPT. So you can see now on the screen I have ChatGPT open and I did a few testings earlier just in preparation for this video to see if it actually works. So unfortunately not truly live but I look forward to seeing your responses in the comment section when I type in this prompt and see what ChatGPT can actually generate. So as you can see I'm using ChatGPT plus the new kind of paid service and I've got the prompt that I generated ready. So I'm just going to copy and paste it as you can see there. So I won't read it out. You can have a read if you want to. You can pause the video and have a proper read. But essentially I'm asking it to write a short communication about oxidative stress, including all of the different attributes of a paper. So abstract, introduction, pros and cons, and a conclusion. Let's see now what it can generate. That is ridiculously fast, like generally ridiculously fast. So already just looking at this, it's got an abstract going into what oxidative stress is, the imbalances, start to go into an introduction. And remember, I've asked it for short communication, so it's done a really short bit. Yes, there is not citing any papers. We're not talking about that at the moment. It's just what can ChatGPT do as kind of a get the ball rolling type of thing. If you are a researcher and you're looking to write a paper, give it the query that you are using so the paper you're trying to write what can it put together to help you get the ball rolling i asked it about the old understanding of octet stress it's giving me that which is crazy because i remember going to a conference and it triggered this thought so i thought for this purpose of this video why not use it then it's going into the current latest opinions and i can already see that there is a difference in context i don't want this video to be too lengthy you know I will put the response hopefully in a document perhaps and link it down below if you really wanted to properly read it. But you can see that it's talking about NRF2, part of a paper that I've published recently that I was second author in was talking about this. So very interesting. And then it finishes with a conclusion. Now what I asked it in this practice session was, let's go down, now write a full paper version of the above with extra detail about the current opinions of oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. 
So it was so quick that I didn't actually scroll down. So as you can see now on the screen, more context, more information. It's going into more detail now about a certain family of proteins. Now I remember it did this for some reason in the practice session, it cut off the conclusion. And then when I asked it, finish the conclusion, it does that. So for some reason, I don't know why it stops it. So in conclusion, the current understanding of oxidative stress in a pathological setting. So clearly it is finishing the conclusion. But that's pretty remarkable as something that took maybe a couple of seconds. It's generated what looks like the start of a paper on a prompt that I just gave it which was write and a review article on the current advances of oxidative stress. I will definitely put this into a document that you guys can have a look at if I'm allowed to. I'm staggered because that's scary good, scary good. So you saw the response, you saw how blown away I was and I think you were. With the level of detail and the speed it was able to look at my prompt and generate something that was a good enough start for somebody who's looking into writing a paper for that. Yes, it didn't have references but now you can start to find them to back up and mould that piece of text into your own paper. I've said this in previous videos, so the one where I talked about can ChatGPT write your PhD thesis, I mentioned that ChatGPT should be used as a tool to get you started, not as a replacement for your own writing, and it should never be used only. So please remember that as kind of a caveat for this video and the videos that are made on AI at the moment. So some people have actually used ChatGPT as an author for their paper, and that's going to be a separate video because there are so many nuances around that. But let's talk about three caveats I want to mention before the end of this video about the response I got from this prompt. Let's look at the time, the quality of the response, and then the benefit long term. Now looking at the time, I probably took maybe one or two minutes to generate a prompt like that, and it took less than a minute, 30 seconds. To generate all of that text. Now if you were to do the same without AI you know how many hours it would take to generate something like that. So the speed is insane and as I mentioned before to help you get the ball rolling that speeds up the time massively. It lowers the barrier to entry so you are then able to start writing your paper, you can take bits of that text, mold into yourself, start adding references so you're already ahead of the game within a matter of maybe a couple of minutes. So that speed is a really, really important. That time factor is very pivotal for those who are looking to you know, generate large amounts of papers. Because a lot of the times we have thought processes, but we're hindered by time. And AI is really helping us to bridge that gap so we can spend more time using our uniqueness and allowing AI to speed up the other boring processes. Now quality, I haven't had time to properly read it through as I'm mostly shooting this video, but I will leave that document in the video description. Let me know what you think. From the service level reading, it is fairly detailed, especially more detailed than I thought, if I'm being honest. There might be some, you know, fabrications, some false statements. I am expecting that because I'm using my scientist knowledge, or your scientist knowledge, to weed out what is false and backing up by references. As I mentioned already in this video, this should be used as a starting tool for your research. And I think it's more than good enough as that in terms of a framework. It's really good as a starting point for you to now crack on with your writing. So I would be really impressed with the quality. For sure. So the benefit, is it worth it in the end? In my opinion, yes. I've yet to try it with the normal version, so the free version. If you do want to try, you can pause the video, copy my prompt, use the free version and see if you get a similar response. Because I'm curious to see what actually happens there. But I think it is worth the effort, whatever field you're into, whatever gaps in knowledge you're looking at, whether it's your master's, your PhD or postdoc, just give it a prompt while you're having coffee, just try it out. See what chat GPT gives you because it might be better to do that and then start the ball rolling, trying to reinvent the wheel. AI is not going anywhere. I mentioned in previous videos, many people know this, so you well make use of it for your benefit. And you can focus on verifying it, finding the proper references and using your knowledge and your skills as a researcher. Remember, AI is not gonna replace you. It's gonna replace the people who may not use AI, who are against it for probably the wrong reasons. So check it out, let me know what you think. I was very, very impressed. So I asked ChatGPT4 to write a paper. I think it did a pretty good job. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. This video over here where I actually use another AI tool to generate research papers really, really quickly for me to read and organize. It's called Illicit. I think you might enjoy it. Let me know what you think about that video. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.